Welcome to Schweitzer Drive, a podcast where we explore what goes on between the generation of electricity and the light switch. Join Dave Whitehead as he interviews the entrepreneurs, innovators, and experts who are inventing the future of electric power. Hello, I'm Dave Whitehead, CEO at Schweitzer Engineering Laboratories, recording this podcast remotely. Today, we're going to be talking about vertical integration with our SEL Senior Director of Vertical Integration, Jesse Hall, who is in our studio today. Jesse is a mechanical engineer who joined SEL's manufacturing team in 2011. In her current role, she oversees SEL's vertical integration teams, which include our magnetics, plastic, tool and die, and sheet metal operations. And she's also leading a new vertical integration project, building a state-of-the-art printed circuit board manufacturing operation coming soon to Moscow, Idaho in December of 2022. Hi, Jesse. You've got a lot of exciting things going on, and thank you so much for taking some time to come on our podcast today. Hi, Dave. Thank you. I really appreciate this opportunity to get it get to talk about all the exciting things going on in vertical integration. Oh, it's going to be fun. Hey, before we, we jump too deep into the details, would you set the stage for our discussion and, and describe a little bit about what vertical integration is and share some examples that uh, might include vertical integration? Absolutely. So vertical integration is when a company has some or all of its supply chain incorporated into the company. So companies that we often think of as examples of vertically integrated would be like Ford Motor Company, um, GM, Target. So they have everything from the manufacturing of the product to the end sales channel. And then, you know, of course, a, an, an example close to all of us is SEL. We have a lot of vertical integration here. So really what you're saying, the vertical integration is we can take as many things that go into a particular product a company might want to buy. So maybe Amazon is the antithesis of what, what vertical integration is. Yes, I think that would be an accurate, <laughs> accurate comparison. <laughs> well, good. You know what? Uh, it, it's always fun to build stuff, right? And the more stuff we can build, I think the, the happier we are as, as engineers and the company at SEL. So this is going to be a, a great discussion. Now, with that said, why does it make sense to let someone else or another company invest all the time and energy and the money in being an expert in a specific area and then just buy it from them? Um, can you talk maybe about some of the reasons why a company might decide to outsource certain activities and conversely, why vertical integration makes a lot of sense, at least certainly why why we think it makes a lot of sense? Sure. I think, I think the things you just highlighted are the main reasons why people don't vertically integrate. It typically is very expensive to do. Um, there, there is a lot of engineering that can go behind it. You know, when I'm talking about expense, you just think of all of the people that go into it, but then the capital investment for some things is is tremendous. You know, if you want to make your own steel, right, the, the investment in that would be huge. Um, and then, as, as you also alluded to, the, the expertise, right, you do get really good at something if you're doing it all of the time. So if it's something that you don't do consistently, or you don't have the expertise, or you can't hire the expertise, then that becomes uh, more challenging. Now, the benefits, though, are are also quite amazing. So a lot of the reason that people will pursue or companies will pursue vertical integration is actually cost savings, right? So um, you can often find cost savings from doing vertical integration, but there are a lot of other really awesome benefits. So for SEL, I think some of the reasons we want to vertically integrate is um, we're able to shorten that feedback loop from manufacturing to design. So not only do we have cool innovations in the manufacturing processes, but by understanding how our parts are made, we are actually able to design those, design our products and the parts that go into them better. Um, so that is that really nice tight feedback loop. Another great benefit that we have seen is the reduction in lead time. So um, yeah, as everybody knows, right, we have five day lead times for our products in manufacturing and uh, we've run into some challenges where some of our suppliers have really long lead times. And so it's nice to be able to shorten that lead time um, and and be able to support our manufacturing goals uh, with regards to OTP and lead time. I think that the biggest reason, though, that we have pursued this in the past is, and currently is the risk the risk reduction of our supply chain. So uh, supply chains have gotten, gotten more complex and increasingly longer as uh, companies have looked to offshore. 
And what we have found over the last couple of years in particular is there is a lot of risk when you do that. You don't know um, what, you know, if you're going to get your part when you need it, you don't know what the prices are going to do. You don't know what the quality is going to be. So that, that reduction of risk in the supply chain is a huge one. And that, that's great. Which, which, so here, here's what gets me excited too, talking about vertical integration. I think there are a lot of merits to it, um, especially when it comes to being innovative, maybe a little bit more fluid in the in the way you go about attacking problems. But vertical integration really seems to me the ability to, to to break down silos within, say, an organization or also within within your particular designs. For example, if you're installing a battery and you have to buy that battery, there's a design constraint you know I have on it, whether it's a double a triple a a d cell or or what have you that you have to comply with and let's let's take batteries for example if we were making our own batteries and we could put them in any form or shape or or factory we want to that really un uncuffs if you will the uh the whole design process or how you go about manufacturing something in, in when you talk about the complete project can can you share your thoughts on well, what you think about that and in, in, in light of vertical integration Oh, I, I totally agree with that. And ironically, this is a discussion we're having this week just around um, injection molding and our our, our ability to make uh, our, our own molds. So the company that we partner with on uh, quick turn molds, they're, they're fantastic to partner with. However, their requirements in order to meet those lead times and to produce parts for us are pretty stringent. We have chosen to invest in uh, different technologies internally to be able to make different part types and different geometries within our molds, which then allows our R&D teams more creativity in their designs. They don't have to compromise as much. Whereas the company that we partner with on prototype molds, they, they haven't invested in that. That is not their model. And so we are limiting our, our team's ability to get exactly what they want for their design. And I, I think that there's examples like that all over, but that one's fresh in my mind because we've talked about it several times this week. I, th- I think you mentioned it maybe a little bit earlier in, in, in the conversation that perhaps some companies think that it's too expensive to bring in capabilities in-house. And there are certainly cases where I'm sure that's very true. But can you talk about some of the, the, the values or successes we've had when we decided to, to vertically integrate? And really, what were the, the drivers behind making those decisions? You know, I think one of the interesting things that we don't always consider when we're talking about vertical integration is how deep the roots uh, of vertical integration are at SEL. So when we've talked about in the past, like, what's the first vertical integration group? We often think of, oh, it was the machine shop in the 90s. But in reality, the very first time SEL vertically integrated was when Dr. Schweitzer built his first relay. So uh, a lot of inventors will invent cool things, and then they will find a manufacturer to build them for us. So if you really think about it, vertical integration vertical integration is truly part of our DNA, and it has been a core piece of, of who we are from the very beginning. You mentioned we do have vertical integration with sheet metal, transformers, our machine shop, tool and die, and um, plastics. I think, you know, the reasons that we have decided to pr- pursue those have been pretty numerous. Uh, I think, you know, cost reduction is certainly one, but the bigger reasons are the shortening of the feedback loops like we've been talking about, as well as improved quality. That has been a really big one for us. We do we do see better quality when we build things ourselves. You don't have to worry about um, shipping damage or things getting lost in the mail and, you know, all of those types of things. And as our lead times continue to shorten, that becomes increasingly important. Uh, and it there is... Uh, it's really cool for an engineer who's designing something to be able to walk up to the guy that's building it and say, Here, here's what I want to do. Can we do it? And then they can have that discussion. And you can you, there's a, just that creativity and that cool collaboration that, that we get to experience. And we see that every day in our, um, you know, in our injection molding area and, and sheet metal, certainly in our machine shop. Um, it's absolutely just been amazing to see. Hey, maybe, maybe we take a, a step back to think about what are, are, are some of the criteria for 
vertical integration or why you want to bring something in a house. And, and some of the things that come to my mind are, well, if I'm having a, a quality issue with a particular part, right, that that's a good reason, well, just to, to build yourself. And, and I can think of an example, certainly from our perspective, for a while, this is 20 years ago, we were having a lot of problems with power supplies. So one day we woke up and said, well, why don't we just build a power supply ourselves? And I got to believe right now, that's one of the most reliable parts of our entire product. Another one is is lead time. I know we were thinking at one point or we were buying PCBs offshore and we'd have to wait for them to get on a tank or, you know, a big boat and, and sail halfway across the world before we would get our, our board so that we brought all that stuff on on shore. Now we're thinking about bringing it in house. We're not thinking about it. We're actually doing it. But I think there's another reason perhaps for that. Um, and I'll, I'll touch on that as probably the last point of why to vertically integrate. The other one is if you have an intellectual property exposure that, uh, man, you spent a lot of time putting a, you know, how to design a, a particular system or component or something like that. You'd hate to, to lose control of it by having somebody else build it. There's certainly geopolitical risk, right? You know, if, if, if a country that you're trying to source parts from is unstable or there's, you know, a, other kind of challenges with it, that that that's a reason to bring it in. And then I think here's one that I, I've thought about. We've got a bunch of wonderful suppliers that we work with, right? And, and outsourcing some of the, the work they do, they provide a great product. They're close to us. The supply chain is really short. They bring some innovative technologies to us. And I see us continuing to do business with those folks for a long time. But we have some other suppliers where their business model is just changing, right? It's they want to go into some very high tech part of their business and the business that we're, we're asking them to provide to us is that lower tech, lower margins. And, you know, it's, it's, they're, they're doing it because out of essentially loyalty to us, whether it was some sheet metal parts or some, some PCBs we design are not the most complicated and it takes up capacity in their factory where they could be doing perhaps a uh, higher margin work for, for their companies. And that'd be the, the other reason where, you know, two companies, we have great relationships with them, but you know what, we, we, are, we have different business needs or different business objectives on, on the one hand, it forces you to, to, to vertically integrate. So what, what are your thoughts on why a company might want to consider vertical integration? I certainly agree with all of those. And that has been our experience here. Uh, we, we do have great partners um, but yeah, we have certainly experienced that where our business models just start to diverge. And so it's definitely worth, uh, worth investigating. And, you know, for us, it turned out the answer was yes, it makes sense for us to vertically integrate. I want to go back for a second and talk about the innovation. I think that okay. that, that one is uh, a very key reason, right? Innovation is a key part of our culture and our values here at SEL. And I think when we think about innovation, uh, I certainly do think about innovating on the product itself, but it, it it's this whole stream of innovation, right? So we have a product that uses a component. Well, if you can design or have design input into that component, that allows you to be more creative and innovative with the end product. Then we have innovation with that product that we are producing in vertical integration. And then the other thing is we have the opportunity to innovate in the manufacturing process too. And so we might be able to make this better quality, faster, more efficiently, using, you know, really interesting different materials. And then that just opens up even more innovation back to that, uh, up, you know, the, the end product. So I think it's a really cool cycle that we have seen happen um, that I think is one of the reasons that SEL really likes to vertically integrate is because we do value that innovation so much. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you 100%. If, if you're if you can control everything that's going into into whatever it is you're doing, um, it allows you a lot more degrees of freedom for for design, right? Otherwise, you know, your say your your part of the project ends at a particular point, and that's the you can only optimize or innovate up to that particular point because then it turns it's it's somebody else's product or somebody else's process or something like that. But if you control all the all the means of production and, and design, you have a lot more degrees of freedom to come up with a, a a globally optimized solution versus a local minimum solution. It's 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 really really mind mind blowing, if you will, when you can, can control everything. Yeah, and I like to bring it up because I think I don't think the when you say the word innovation that people immediately think of manufacturing, oh, you're innovative in manufacturing. But I think we are very innovative in manufacturing. And um, it, so I think it's a real you know, success and really cool part of that story of vertical integration here. I agree with you. It's, it's, I get really excited when we talk about vertical integration. But let me play a little bit of devil's advocate. You know, an, um, we talk about, you know, advantage of, of 
vertical integration is supply chain security risk mitigation. And this is certainly something that uh, we and other companies, you know, have, have had a challenge with in, in, in 2020 during during the, the COVID pandemic, um, you know, trying to get parts from from around the world and basically parts of the world were shutting down. And, and how do you get parts when you want to build your your components and, and, and products to support your, your customers when you can't, can't get parts from overseas. So my, my question to you then is, yeah, you vertically integrate, but do you really reduce your supply chain risk or are you just moving where that risk come from? Right. So instead of getting a a semi finished good piece that goes into your product, you're getting raw material. and, And could that raw material then be the, the challenge for your, your, your vertical integration? Yes. So uh, I think that is a wonderful question. Absolutely. There is still risk in the supply chain, right? Um, But every, I guess, every person that you take out of the middle of the supply chain, your your risk is reduced. The other thing is uh, when we have raw materials or rawer materials, uh, we generally have a lot more flexibility with those materials. So for example, if we're looking at sheet metal, um, if I am buying pieces of, of sheet stock, right? So we maybe have a few sizes that we, thicknesses we like to use. I can turn that into just about anything, right? And so I have less inventory. I also can buy that plain material from more people. Uh, whereas if I want it to be punched or bent or, you know, whatever, some semi-finished process, at that point, you know, I've really locked that material into the one thing that it can be. I have to manage that inventory the inventory is going to be more expensive, and I can probably get it from fewer people. Um, so ha- the more raw the materials are, the better, uh, the more easily we're able to manage them and the less risk there is in that part of the supply chain. Okay, that makes me feel good. I was, I was getting a little bit nervous about how we just really shipped in our supply chain risk, so thank you. So how, how, how really has vertical integration helped improve our performance, you know, and, and what do we learn from perhaps the good experiences or the bad experiences of, of vertical integration? I'm sure not everything was rosy, but in the, in, I think that the net effect is that, that it has improved our, our, our performance, our ability to produce products quickly and, and in a timely fashion for our customers. Sure. Yes, definitely. Uh, we have been most successful with vertical integration when we have custom parts. So, you know, this is something, uh, well, custom parts and parts that are really integral to the design or the performance of our overall products. So transformers is certainly one of those. Uh, Sheet metal, you know, it's a pretty big piece. Uh, Plastic. So some of those things that are very customized to the design and, you know, critical to its its overall performance. That's when we've been most successful. Uh, And so some of the ways that we've been successful there, how has that helped our performance? I will say, you know, cost is certainly one. We we generally can produce things for less. Uh, one of the other ways that we typically see is quality. Often if we have challenges with a supplier, it's because we're not getting the quality that we need in order to produce the quality that we want, and we're able to control our quality better. Uh, lead time reduction, absolutely. The other thing that it's came up recently um, is when there is a problem, we're able to fix it faster. So we had a, an issue with the plastic part. There was a big red light on a lot of products and uh, we were able to get that resolved in less than a day. And uh, Jake Schlosser, our uh, senior director for manufacturing commented to me, he's like, man, I'm so glad you guys are there. If, if you wouldn't have been there, uh, you know, if we would have had to, to work with the supplier on this, we would probably be down for a week. Whereas, you know, instead it was one day. And the great thing is, is we knew we were able to figure out root cause quickly and correct it so we'll never have that problem again. Yeah, it's the bright spots of vertical integration. It, it is really easy if you own all the means of production to get everybody in the room to go solve the problem versus trying to call somebody up three, four, five, halfway world around or halfway around the world, right? In terms of time zones or something like that, trying to get everybody on a phone and, and solve a problem, describe what, what the problem is. Um, just uh, the the ability to, to to muster the resources to solve a problem quickly when it when it occurs and problems will occur is uh, certainly a huge advantage of, of vertical integration. Definitely, you're an expert in vertical integration. If a company was considering moving forward to to 
do more vertical integration? Are there some first steps they might take to evaluate the model? Um, how it would work well for them? Um, do you simply look for the, the, the biggest area of quality efficiencies in their sub in, in a supply chain or, or how, how do you go about um, prioritizing what you might go about vertically integrating? Uh, so we're actually doing this exercise as well because we do have a lot of awesome vertical integration at SEL, but we, we, we need to figure out what's next, what makes sense next, right? So the first thing that I've asked is our, our supply chain team, what, what parts worry you the most and why? And so then that comes back to that, you know, geopolitical risk. We have one supplier. There is only one supplier in the world, those types of questions. So I think, you know, if you're going to build, you need parts. So that, that's the first thing. Can we get them? How risky is that? And then the second one, uh, I work, talk to our quality team and ask them what, well, and our production teams as well, of course, uh, what parts do you struggle with quality wise? Uh, and so we looked at that as well. And then I think I would delve into the, can we do this faster? Is there, well, I would certainly ask, is there something innovative? I think that'd be right up there with supply chain risk and quality as well. Can we make this in an innovative way or innovate on the design or something like that? Um, and then I'd, I'd start going through the, can we shorten the lead time? Um, is there a cost benefit and start looking at all of those? Well, that's a good answer too. I know, you know, our, our vertical integration aspirations really, really started with uh, uh, Ed Schweitzer, the, the, the founder of the company. You know, he, Ed, be, besides being a, a brilliant engineer, just loves building stuff. I mean, if we, if, if he had his druthers, we would build every single little piece of uh, parts that, that go into to, to our products. Um, but what, I, what I've seen is the, the, from just walking around the, the, the factories and the shop floor and engineering and stuff like that, the, the way this vertical integration is, is, is taking off, you know, that oh, we could build that or we could do this better. Um, where, where do you see vertical integration going uh, for, for, for SEL or, or maybe even for the, the, the country, right, with this, this new idea of, of everybody having a, a short supply chain, building stuff close to, to where, you know, it's needed? What, what, what are your thoughts going forward? We are certainly anticipating that we'll see more onshoring. So I think people will want to be shortening their supply chain. And that has um, helped inform our decision about we should be considering vertically integrating more of our supply chain, um, just because we'll have more, you know, folks competing for those limited resources. So I don't think, uh, I don't think, unfortunately, that we will vertically integrate everything that doesn't make it wouldn't, it wouldn't make sense. But I think we need to keep looking for those parts that are critical to our design, the parts that we need to innovate on, um, parts that are at risk in the supply chain, of course, and then uh, look for opportunities to vertically integrate those. Well, Jesse, thank you very much for your insights on, on vertical integration. I think we should get together and uh, maybe have another podcast and you can describe the status of the the board factory uh, facility when it's all up and running, all, all your lessons learned and, you know, experiences, the good times and the bad times of, of putting that shop together. It's going to be a, a, a fabulous facility, you know, the greenest probably board house in the entire country, maybe even the, the world. So uh, good luck with the, the, the project. And I hope to have you back on the podcast in, well, the end of 2022, if, if not sooner. I would love an opportunity to talk about that. And thank you very much for having me today. All right. Well, thank you, Jesse. Talk to you later. Thanks. Bye. Thank you for stopping by Schweitzer Drive. Join us again as we learn about, explore, and celebrate electric power. For more information about the show, please visit selinc.com slash Schweitzer Drive.